Now that we're into the main stage of TI, I want to talk about the meta of the TI. Some picks you should be using in your pubs because they're just absurdly strong compared to the other heroes and Dotas. I think the pros really know what they're doing. I mean, teams that have adjusted to these heroes are succeeding. So I'm going to give you a couple new heroes, their item builds and heroes to pick with them so that you can succeed in your games. This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds, just like it, over at GameLeap.com. GameLeap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential. But for now, let's hop into the video. Now, the first thing I want to do is give a couple honorable mentions. I won't be giving their pairings or their item builds. However, ET has been one of the best supports of TI. His ability to zone people out of lane and then team fight, it feels unmatchable. If you get the Astral Spirit on a creep wave or even a stack neutral camp or even just two heroes, you whack them down, your bonus movement speed makes you impossible to trade with, and therefore, okay, even natural order, I almost forgot to mention it, that ability is bonkers. Next up is Kunkka as a flex. So if you don't know anything about Kunkka, he can be played in the 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And as a result, you can pick him early in the draft, especially if you're playing party queue with friends and flex him to any role, catching the enemy theme off guard and providing either utility through Tidebringer or just through his spells. Next up is Shadow Demon. Yes, this hero's W Soul Catcher is one of the best spells in the game. 40% HP makes no sense. It really doesn't. It has not made any sense for a while. BKB doesn't even dispel it. You just lose the HP. Purges do. However, it really is just that crazy. If you get hit by any sort of stun and then Soul Catcher, you just die. And then finally, it's Ench. Now, I don't want to talk about Ench because don't play her. She's so brain dead. If you play Ench, just get a life, kid. All right? That's all I have to say. But the hero is really good. It's a super solid offlaner. So if you want a free MMR, learn Ench. Now, the first main hero I want to talk about is Marana. This hero has been in the spotlight of TI. And honestly, I hadn't seen much of any Marana. In fact, I thought this hero was pretty trash. So interesting to see. And I'm really fascinated to see, honestly, that this hero is good. I'm shocked because I thought it was trash. But apparently, the arrow is just one of the best abilities to really apply map pressure. And a lot of the popular heroes right now work absolutely fantastically with Marana, which I'm going to actually go over first for her because they are really what completes this hero less than the item build. And those heroes are Kunkka, as I talked about. His ability to X and set up for an arrow is secures almost any kill in the early game. Shadow Demon, another one we talked about. ET, like all three of these heroes that are also top meta picks right now, just set up with Marana. So it makes a lot of sense that she's popular. And not only that, she can be a farming core if needed in, you know, a core role or even in the support role. You can split push and go for an axe build. And your talents are also extremely good, but we'll talk about that in a bit. For item builds, I was looking at an FY replay, one of his recent ones, and he went for a bottle into wand before boots. And I kind of like this because I feel like the main purpose of this hero is to stay on the map, cast spells, and, you know, even be a little bit tanky, right? The Ability to have leaps makes you one of the hardest supports in the game to actually kill. It's pretty crazy. You don't notice how important it actually is to have the ability to burst supports until you're facing a Marana that just has three leaps. It's really frustrating to play against, strictly for the fact that, you know, the CM that you usually go on and blow up is now a Marana and she just hops away. Moving on from that though, you want to buy a lot of clarities. It's very important that you can constantly spam your arrow either on a large creep or going for kills, which is why it's important to have the Kunkka and Estes. And then after that, you can go into your boots. And following that, which is kind of where it gets hard, you can go almost anything, right? You could go Medallion, you could go Urn, you could go Veil. A very common one I've seen is Mech. And some players are just going from Mana Boots into Aghanim Scepter and becoming a core. They just split push with the Aghanims. And if you don't know what the Ags does, it gives you a second Star Storm, basically allowing you to have a ton of AoE damage in fights and one-shot creep ways. Moving on, moving on, we have... Io carry now this hero is one that will take a decent amount of practice with i actually don't think io is as hard as you might think if you're like oh, i don't want to play io that's a that's a weird hero really the main thing you have to get down is the farming pattern so the big thing about this hero is it's level 15 talent which if you're unfamiliar with it is 75 spirits hero damage yes 75 and if you're not familiar with how much it does at level 4 it is 80 meaning it essentially doubles you double your damage and if you don't know what the axe does it makes the ball spin around to you constantly so you do double the damage of the spell at level 15 and you farm there extremely quickly because of a couple reasons you can take over a creep which allows you to get boots because you get the tether movement speed of the creep and then your spirit balls naturally blow up once they run out allowing you to farm stacks and you can spread them out and take more than one camp at a time 
Basically, you can run this as a mid carry or an off lane. And what I will say, the beginning items for IO stay the same, right? You want to have a stick. It's pretty important. You want to have regen, like a ton of regen. And then after that, you're going to go into a helm. No boots, just into a helm. Because the idea here is that you take over the helm creep, get its movement speed. Very, very important. After that, you build an Ags. And similar to Mirana, it gets a bit complicated after the Ags. You can go down a magical route and go kind of a Veil or an Aeon Disc if you want to be tanky. Or you can go into more of the right clicker build where you either go, you know, Satanic, so you can have the lifesteal, especially in the later stages of the game. You can go Maelstrom because you have a lot of attack speed. You can go Solar Crest so that you can amp your teammates damage and your own damage. You really do have a lot of options and I think that's kind of a big thing of this TI, having options either in your picks or in your heroes. And heroes to consider with IO are Chen and Windranger. Now, we saw OG play Chen with IO and my mind was just like, it was literally melting. I'm like, why is everyone just full HP in one second? The amp healed from Chen is, I, 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 do I have to say no more? Hey, do I have to say any more? It really is that simple. You just giga heal. And the last one is another one that we saw OG run. So I'm kind of basing this, you know, obviously a lot of OG because it's what they've been picking, but is Windranger. If you haven't seen the clip where they just backdoor the tower in an instant with the IO attacks targets and focus fire, it's pretty hilarious, right? Not only that, once again, you get the movement speed of whoever you're tethered to, and when run grants one ranger maximum movement speed. As a result, it's a good combo. Now moving on is the app source special. I mean, we haven't seen other players play it, so maybe I shouldn't say that, but seemingly originated by app source was the support invoker. Now I want to cover this one briefly. Um, I do plan on making a full video on it pretty soon. So the items you want to go are Bassy in your laning stage. So you start the lane with the Sage's Mask and buy the Ring of Protection at the side shop. And this allows your pretty weak laning stage to get a lot better considering you provide armor and gate eight damage. And then moving on, you want to buy a stick, right? Once again, you have a bad lane. So you need items like stick to sustain it into, you know, your boots. After that, you get an urn. And then that's where, you know, you can start changing it up a bit the typical one after that is the eggs but what i will say about support invoker as a side note is try not to die get to that urn look for kills and cast your emp and team fights that's the general idea there and this hero once again i think if you're playing party queue it's much better than it's solo queue where if you just first pick it at this point i would believe that people would understand that it's probably support and not mid however at the same time like there's a ton of mid players who just don't care and first pick invoker anyway so maybe that's not true either way if you like Invoker and you want to get into supporting, it's not that bad. You can split push, you can get farmed, and it works. And heroes to pick with it are Axe and Omni Knight. Now, I really like Axe, and I in fact had a viewer tell me about this combo a while ago, and I, I'm not going to lie, I doubted him. I'm like, what are you talking about? Support Invoker, this, this is a joke, right? I hadn't heard of it before. I'm like, come on. Now, props to that guy. All due respect. I, I really wish I remember your name. You can let me know. But, uh. This combo is good because Axe can provide you with the ability to either play the lane normally and then you have Battle Hunger Cold Snap, which is good. Or if you feel like your lane is weak, which often it can be with the Axe Invoker against certain heroes, then you can just cut the wave and you have a couple options. You can just sap XP from the Axe while he's cutting or head off into a tri lane setting. And for Omni Knight, it's somewhat similar to Axe, less the creep cutting where you're just a strong laner and Invoker can kind of stand behind you and sap XP. That's a general idea there. Next up is one of my personal favorites. I think this is brutally strong right now. One of the best heroes of TI, and that is Gyro Mid. The flexibility of this hero, not only to go mid and safe lane, is impressive, but its ability to do well in almost every matchup is what really makes me love this hero. If you cast your rocket on your opponent, you can simply use your low base attack time and extremely good animation to just deny an infinite amount of creeps, right? Even without the rocket. But what I'm saying is you cast your rocket from the back lines, you let it hit them, deny creeps, get the last hits. And then once you get levels, level three, level five, level even six is where you get a ton of kill potential. You can run anyone down. Not only that, if you're a gank heavy player, gyro's your pick. Why? Because you run to his side lane, rocket brush of one shots like the majority of the hero pool. Or if you're a farm based hero and you just want to AFK all game, which I totally understand, it works in solo queue. Gyro is also one of the best if not like top three late game carries, right? Flat cannon's insane and your Ags with Satanic is pretty bonkers. Very hard for anyone to man up on you. By the way, his talents are insane. Side note, but his Gyro's talents have to be some of the best in the game. Health or damage, really, really good. Rocket Barrage damage gives you 50% extra. It's 11 damage and it does around like 22, 23, 24, I forget. But really super good talents that help you snowball the early game. Pick some Gyro. And now heroes to pick with it. I really like 
Tiny Four in particular. It's one uh, that I've seen in one of my pubs. And what I noticed about it is Tiny can kill anyone if he can get them under tower or if he can get a good toss pack. Now, if we understand this Jaru mid, you put down a rocket, it's almost impossible for the majority of mid heroes to kill it, if not all. And as a result, they get hit and it's a free toss pack for Tiny either under tower or to a gyro who's completely separated from the creep wave. And if you understand gyro with another hero when they're separated from a creep wave, they get absolutely shredded. That's just how it goes by Rocket Barrage. And the next one is Marana, similar to Tiny. It's like, okay, if you have free setup, you're gonna do well. And it's that's the same idea. You rocket into an arrow, that's it. And finally, uh, I did wanna add an extra one for this is Willow. Once again, the same idea, Willow can gank mid super effectively, and I really like this one for the team fight potential. So Gyro can be a frontliner, especially when, his, when he gets his BKB, which really opens up the fight for the Willow. The Willow can really pick and choose her targets, and not only that, she can give you a lot of backup with all of her control, and most importantly, her Terrorize gives you a ton of AoE control and damage, you know, in combination with the Gyrocopter. And finally on this list is, I've been seeing this for a while, guys. This hero is so good. It's the like the best pup hero and it has been for a while and that is alchemist if you don't play alchemist and you need mmr like you're you're just trying to crawl out of your the depths of hell of mmr hell you're like ah, i want to get to 2k it's been it's been three years of playing like i get it i get it it's not easy but this hero is easy alk so easy it's so easy please just here's the formula okay hit some creeps in the lane don't hit your opponent hit the creeps after you're done hitting the lane creeps hit the jungle creeps and at 20, 21, 22 minutes, when you have three items, wipe the enemy team. You're welcome. But getting into item builds, uh, it's very important that you go a lot of clarities and mangoes on out, as you will not be buying soul ring or bottle. So that's sort of the replacement as a side note. And then after that, you're going to buy two bracers as your starting items into phase boots. This gives you really good stats for farming and, you know, maybe tanking a gank here and there into a radiance. This is your farming item and fighting item into an AC. After the Radiance, there's a ton of different builds, really. You can check them out over either Dota buff or the TI. You can just look at all the out games. It is varying a lot, to be honest, but the general idea is the first four items that I've talked about, Bracer, Bracer, Phase, Radiance, and then you can go either for an AC, you can go for a Blink after the Radiance, you can rush BKB. Really, there are a ton of options, so I would say experiment, but probably the most basic one, in my opinion, is going for Radiance, AC, Blink, into BKB. And then after the BKB, you can go for Abyssal, uh, you can get a moon shard, you can start sharing eggs. Really, you have a lot of options later on, but that's the general idea. And finally, for the heroes that you can pick with Alk, I really like Oracle. This combo makes a lot of sense to me for the regard that in lane, you know, Oracle can protect you a bit. He can give you a bit of heals if needed. Not really, not the best healing support. But most importantly, what I see with this is the ability for Oracle to purge you in fights and provide kind of a save. So Alk is a hero that wants to run in and actually can get bursted by particular lineups. And as a result, Oracle's W gives you either A, complete magic immunity, which is fantastic for the early fights, or B, just false promises you, you get double your chemical rage healing, you're basically guaranteed to heal the full. And the most important thing to understand about this pairing is that Oracle can purge any spirit vessel with one click of his Q. Next up is Kunkka. Um, I really like this one because what we're talking about with Alk can either go mid or to the safe lane. And no joke, you actually could play it off lane. There wasn't any player who got to like a top, top rank. His name was like Elmo. <laughs> it's pretty funny, but it works because Alk's Alk. But why I like Kunkka is because you can put Kunkka in either of the lanes that Alk might want to go to. So you can flex the Alk and give him whatever matchup he wants. And then Kunkka can be a very good fighting early game hero. Right, he can run around, create all the space that Alk needs, fight super well early, and then most importantly, you have the Boat Rum, which makes Alk unkillable. And finally, the last hero and the last point of this video, thank you for staying with me if you have up until this point. I appreciate it. I really do. And that is ET. Now, why ET? Simple. If you put the Alk in the safe lane and you have an ET who can basically 1v2 the enemy lane, <laughs> Alk gets free farm, and that's all, folks. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do like and subscribe. I really do appreciate you guys. Been having a blast with this YouTube channel lately and I hope to keep it up and I genuinely hope you are enjoying the content. So thanks for watching. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now.
right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.